Recently I headed out to Paris, France on a family vacation. It had nothing to do with the ocean, nothing to do with surfing, just chasing family time. I took 10 days off, went to Paris with the family, and had fun. So instead of boring you with the step-by-step, play-by-play of my whole time there in Paris, I'm gonna break it down. Just to the things that I really enjoyed, or on the other hand, things that I just didn't like and I won't do it again. Keep in mind, I have ADD. It's hard for me to stay in one spot for too long, unless there's a lot going on, and I hate crowds. It's something about getting older. I just, I don't wanna be in a room where I'm person to person with people. It's not a germ thing, it's just, it's just not comfortable. Let's take a look at some of my favorite things and some of my not so favorite things about being in Paris. And we're off. Right? Really? Really? <laughs> just got off a of plane. This is my wife and daughter, who are enormous Disney fans, want to spend the first two days at Disney Paris. It's just me and the hundreds of thousands of my friends. Yeah, I'm not the hugest fan of Disneyland, but here with my daughter, gotta do the dad thing. So excited. <laughs> oh my god. I have no idea what to expect. Oh my god. Like that one? Yes. Yeah. Right yeah, it's definitely not my cup of tea, but to see the joy and happiness that it brought to my daughter made it all worth it. And I would do it over again a million times. It's so Now don't get me wrong, I was excited to get the heck out of Disneyland and head into Paris. And man, Paris has some pretty swanky Ubers. All right, now that I've got Disneyland out of the way, let's talk about Paris. And what better way to kick this off with France's symbol and, and a place that welcomes almost 7 million visitors a year, which also makes it the most visited monument that you have to pay for. And yes, we did pay for it. And we paid way far in advance. Tickets can sell out super quick and we wanted to go all the way up to the top. Going into the Eiffel Tower, I'm kind of weary of crowds and it was super crowded, but it paid off for the views. The views were magnificent and heck, you could even get a glass of champagne up at the top. Let's go to the good part. <laughs> so these are the benches that are made for the people who are really tired of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> you can't see it. It's behind this tree. As we walked off, we turned around to get another glimpse of the Eiffel Tower and notice that they have the riverboat tours. And yeah, there's not a chance you can get me on one of those. I, like I mentioned before, I am not a fan of crowds. Up next was my very favorite thing to do there in Paris. Get up early and go for a walk. When you get out that early, all the businesses are still closed. All the tourists have not left their hotels yet or they're still having breakfast. And so you kind of get the streets to yourself without having to worry about a crowd all around you. How's the view from this bench? That bridge. Come 
out, you are on the river, on the bridge. Now the weird thing about this tunnel is that it smells a little bit like pee. Other than that, you're good. Then I found the high rent district. These are next level shops. odd walking around areas that you're not familiar with never been on never been to don't know where you're going and you're simply relying on an app to tell you how to get there so you just kind of wander guided by an app obviously it's very bike friendly and bus friendly one of the not so smart things i did was walk for about an hour to the catacombs now that doesn't sound too bad until you realize I did not get tickets and of course it was sold out. Not one of my brightest moments, but in a turn for the weird, I ended up walking around the neighborhood just up the street and it was eerily quiet. Now I've come across an area that seems to be almost deserted. It's kind of weird. It's like, a, it's like no one lives here. Well, I found a university. It's still oddly quiet around here. <laughs> Obviously, it's, I'm not in a very touristy area. Now, my favorite neighborhood there in Paris, and I'm sorry if I just butcher this name, is Montmartre. Now, this sits on top of a hill, and you gotta walk a ton of stairs to get to. I mean, you can take a taxi or something to get up there because that is where the Sacre Coeur Church is. And I probably butchered that name too. This little neighborhood is awesome. There's a lot of small restaurants, cute little stores, and the town itself seems to still be in the 1800s, including Cobblestone Road. Daddy's phone is about to die, and he's using it to film a video. A super touristy thing I really had a blast doing was the night tour on the big bus. Yeah, that's about as touristy as you can do in any city. But here, it was a great way to easily transport around the city and see everything from the convenience of your seat. One of the best parts of the tour is it stops right in front of the Eiffel Tower as it goes through its five minute sparkle illumination light show. It's something that everyone, no matter what your age, is going to love to watch. Now, a lot of people are going to say a must see is the Arc de Triomphe, and it is. It's got an amazing view up top. Highly recommend it. Check it out at nighttime. It's kind of cool too with all the night lights. But an even more entertaining thing to do there is it just sit back and watch the cars and the traffic and the craziness right outside. It's free and I simply cannot believe that there's not more accidents. <laughs> Next on my list is Versailles. If you've been there, you already know my feelings towards this. It is absolutely stunning to look at. So much gold on this and around this and inside of this, it's amazing. But it is crowded and there's not a lot of room to spread out. Out back, there's a garden, absolutely beautiful, plenty of room to spread out. I could spend the whole day in the garden, but we're really centering this on the inside. Stuff is beautiful, but it's just way too crowded for my liking. I basically walked as fast as I could through there, got out of there, and walked over to the little town right next to it. 
really quaint, small town. And that was a little bit more breathable for me. So I found a little bookstore in a small, quiet little town and got my daughter a birthday card. My goal, get her a birthday card in Paris. How often can I do that? But Versailles is beautiful, especially if you can somehow figure out a way to tour it without that many people. I don't think it's legally allowed to have a video about Paris without talking about food. Scooby Doo. <laughs> I had a lot to eat and I pretty much enjoyed everything I had. It was all more expensive than I'm used to here in the United States, but it was worth it. Every time you sit down, there's no rush to get you out. They don't just come over and hand you the check. You have to ask for it. I like that. I'm guessing it's hard to go wrong with the food there in Paris. Right about now, you're probably saying, but Brad, no mention of the Louvre? No, I didn't go in. I went there once before to go see the Mona Lisa. I felt like I was at Disneyland. The line was just too long, and I couldn't get that close to even see the Mona Lisa. Instead, on this trip, I hung out in the gardens just outside. And honestly, that was one of my favorite things I did the entire vacation. Honestly, the best part of the entire trip, it's going to sound corny, but it was spending time with my family. My daughter is growing way too fast. Be able to spend all day with her. I'm so, so happy, happy right now. Watch her laugh, watch her have fun, and watch her take in Paris for the first time. Nothing's going to top that. None of this stuff that I saw would, would ever top that. The memories with her in them will still be the best. That's a little embarrassing. <laughs> of course, I went and saw and did a lot more than what you're seeing in this video. I just didn't want to make this like an hour long episode. Here's all the honorable mention stuff that I saw I liked. I just didn't want to try to fit in, including visiting Jim Morrison's gravesite in the rain. <laughs> building just kind of blends in there. Obviously all mirrored glass blends in. That is so cool. As Bell and I decided to stop and have breakfast, there's a huge bike race going on. It's not every day you get to see something like this in Paris. Looks like last night, Saturday night's maybe drink-a-thon got a little out of hand. Just dropping them off anywhere. Apparently this is a popular corner here. Whoever's in this region must be really cool because everyone wants to rent bikes and get over here. <laughs> it's a good way to tell what's a popular spot. So as far as nicest McDonald's ever goes, it's right here. This is your McDonald's. And then over there is where you can take and eat outside. I am not 100% sure. I'll need to look this up when I get home. I'm pretty sure that's Rochambeau. Rock, papers, scissors. That guy. And sometimes when you wander, you just end up in these streets that are perfectly empty and all to yourself. And you have them. One last thing. Take a walk by yourself. Let no one else dictate where you're gonna go. Just start looking around and go, oh, I really like that, I wanna go there. Or I really don't wanna go there, it looks horrible, too crowded, et cetera, like in my case. So get out, roam by yourself, wander, look at something and head in that direction. So there it is, my trip to Paris, France. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, I'm Brad Jacobson, and I'll see you on the sand.